My name is Lalo de Almeida. I'm a Brazilian photojournalist based in Sao Paulo. This talk is about the wildfires that hit the Pantanal region last year, which is the largest tropical wetland in the planet. Around 4 million hectares were destroyed by the blaze, which represents one-third of the entire biome. On this map, you can see the Amazon in green and the Pantanal further south in brown. When people think of an environmental tragedy in Brazil, the spotlight is always on the Amazon. Even for myself, who work and live in Brazil, I had never seen the Pantanal as a biome under great threat. But I was wrong. When I made my first trip to Mato Grosso in August, the situation was already out of control. Even the road leading to the fire combat operations base was blocked by flames, and the hotel where the firefighters were staying had been evacuated because it was surrounded by fire. We decided to visit a farm in the region with the largest populations of Hyacinth macaws in the world because of the place was being destroyed by fire. The four-hour drive along a dirty road was pure devastation. Everything was gray and black. Almost arriving at the place, we saw a brown spot on the burned pasture. It was a dead deer. A few meters ahead, under a burned tree, there was a family of dead monkeys, more than 15, all carbonized. Continuing down the road, a deer cub was injured and totally lost. In over 10 years of covering the Amazon burnings, I had never seen so many animals killed by wildfires. When we arrived at the farm where the macaws were located, there were just three firemen combating dozens of fire spots with only one broken vehicle. Despite the heroic efforts of these men, 95% of the area was destroyed and according to reports from the biologist who manages the place, most of the macaws are no longer there. The weeks were passing and the fires were only getting worse. On my second trip to the Pantanal in September, I went to document the Transpantanera region, a park road that cuts through the northern Pantanal and it's probably the best place in Brazil to see wildlife. The landscape along the Transpantanera was desolate. Most of the vegetation was burned or still on fire. A yellowish smoke covered everything. It was common to see carbonized animals along the road, especially snakes and caimans, both animals that had the more difficulties to escape in the fire. The few lagoons left because of the stream drought were disputed by dozens of animals to feed themselves and escape from the fire. As the small lagoons dried up, the animals migrated in search of water. Many ended up dying of thirst and lack of food. The Transpantanera Road has 120 bridges. 118 of these are wooden bridges. Several of them were destroyed by wildfires. To prevent other bridges burning, the local people organized themselves into brigades that kept a 24-hour watch on the fires. Thanks to these people, the road remained passable throughout the burning season. Every day, a new stretch of road burned, and there was no coordinated fire combat operation. The Pantanal was abandoned to itself, and it looked like that the fire would only stop when everything was burned or the rain season arrived. And that's what happened. The fires only stopped when the rain came in November. One day, we went up the San Lorenzo River by boat in search of the jaguar. After two hours, we spotted one hunting on the banks of the river. The jaguar walked slowly until it stopped in a small clearing in the middle of the burned vegetation. It pocketed at the ashes with its paw, as if it was trying to understand what was happening to its forest. Controlled burning is a traditional and very controversial method used by ranchers to renew the pastures in the Pantanal. Last year, due to stream drought, the burning was forbidden, but some irresponsible ranchers did anyway, and the fire spread around. Four ranchers are being investigated by federal police as being responsible for last year's tragedy. Cattle raising is a traditional activity in the Pantanal and has been present in the region since the 17th century. We visit a farm that had 100% of its area destroyed by fire. The owner was completely desolated and had already decided to abandon the place and head it over to his sons. On that farm, 200 cattle had already died due to the fires. And in the stable, despite the care of the cowboys, the calves were dying one after the other. The floor of the stable was covered with dead or wounded calves, and many of them with burned paws could no longer stand there. 
On our fourth and last trip to the Pantanal, at the end of October, we went to the Serra do Amorar, one of the most beautiful and isolated areas in the southern Pantanal. We stayed at the Santa Teresa Forma, a large private property dedicated to conservation. At the time, the region concentrated most of the fire spots. The day after we arrived, a massive wildfire passed through the farm, destroying everything in its path. The noise of the fire moving through the forest was so loud, it sounded like an airplane turbine. After the fire has passed, the landscape was surreal. Black burned trees and the white ground covered with ashes. Walking through this desolate landscape, it was common to find dead animals, like anacondas, tapirs and wild pigs. But this fire had been so intense that not even the birds had time to fly. We found many dead birds carbonized in the branches. The day after this devastating fire, brigade members from IBAMA, the Brazilian Environmental Agency, arrived in the region to help fight the blaze. Brave men, they worked 12 hours a day combating the fire with just a few tools under a 44 degrees heat for a salary of $250. To the frustration of the fire brigade, they had arrived too late to control the fires on the region. Even though they are used to fighting fires all over the country, they were shocked when they came across this carbonized bugio monkey. It looked like a human figure dragging itself. They had never seen such a destructive wildfire. <laughs> 